Welcome everybody to the Overcomers Network channel. Um, today we're going to be discussing the silent treatment, the silent treatment and whether it's a form of abuse. Now if you look at the silent treatment in, as a whole, I don't know if anybody here has been actually um, subjected to silent um, treatment, but I know that I have. But if we look at it as a whole and we look at what it actually does to us, we can actually identify it as a form of abuse. And there's many reasons why people use the sign of treatment to get at another person. And when I was looking at this subject about it, I realised it's okay to be silent. There's good to be silent for a certain reason. As we see in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse seven, there's a time to be silent and a time to speak. We see that Jesus and we see John the Baptist and Moses, they went off into the wilderness, Moses went up the mountain, they came away from everybody, and then they came back with a message. So in that sense, it's good to be silent. But to give a silent treatment, we know is a form of abuse. And there's many reasons why people decide to give the silent treatment, whether it be in a relationship or a friendship. Now, I've been subject to the silent treatment in, on both spectrums. And the first time I had the silent treatment was when I was 17 years old. And there was a group of friends and I walked into the pub thinking nothing of it. I just had given birth to my son and um, was looking forward to my first night out and meeting everybody. And the whole group of friends did not speak to me. I walked in, was saying hello, and I was given the silent treatment. So for them, they had a, to them they had a reason to give me the silent treatment. But for me, I couldn't see what the reason was. So to me, it was a form of abuse, a form of manipulation, a form of trying to take control, a form of trying to make the other person feel worthy, rejected, make them feel how they, they were feeling. But at that point, when I found out later, it wasn't that I had actually done anything wrong. It was one of the group, one of the women in the group that had actually done me wrong. And to get everyone on her side, she spoke ill of me so that she looked like the better person. So that's one form of silent treatment when friends can just turn against you and they can stop speaking to you for no reason without giving you um, a reason or even opportunity to actually give your side of the story. So people do use the silent treatment as a form of manipulation, form of control, and it is a form of abuse. So now we're going to look at it in the aspects of a relationship between a male and a female when somebody gives you the silent treatment. And again, I will emphasize that when somebody gives you the silent treatment in a relationship, it is sometimes because they are in the wrong, they're guilty, but also they wanna make you guilty or they didn't get their own way. Today's terms is called ghosting. It's called ghosting someone, you're making a point, you're making a statement that this person has upset you. Um, I'm going to go to extent to actually say that I think it's my, personally, being in Christ, that it's um, very childish to do that because the word of God says that in Hebrews 12 verse 14, that we should pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. So this message actually, for those of you who are in Christ, should take on this scripture to know that we must make peace of all men. We must keep the unity of the spirit. We must try to keep the unity of the spirit in a for the bond of peace, because if we are one in Christ, then we should endeavor to do that. So when we look at um, the sign of treatment, it's a treatment. It's treating somebody in an ungodly way by using silence. Now, it could be because they're sulking, and it's only for a short time, sometimes people do that. It could be for a longer period of time, or it could be that's it. You know, King David said, I cut all evil doers from the city of the Lord. But we're talking about those who have done nothing wrong and somebody's given you a silent treatment because they have done wrong or they cannot meet up to your expectation or they just want to take control over your emotions to make you feel bad. And even as I'm speaking, um, the Lord has actually dropped into my spirit that jealousy can make somebody give you the silent treatment. And I believe this is definitely for someone here today, that you're getting the silent treatment because someone's jealous of you, whether it be a friend or whether it be a partner or ex now, 
they're giving you the silent treatment because you're able to get things together. You're able to stand on your own ground. You're able to make a stand as to what you believe is right and to what you believe is wrong. So the silent treatment, you're getting the silent treatment right now because you have made a stand and, you, and that per other person is actually jealous of you. Now, a lot of people say, you know, people are jealous of them. We also can say, oh, that's because they're jealous, that's because they're jealous. But jealousy is a real emotion, it's a real thing. Jealousy, as we know the saying says, jealousy kills. And jealousy does kill. It can kill someone's spirit when they give you the silent treatment because they're dealing, it's an emotional thing which can damage your mind, make you feel rejected, make you feel frustrated because you're trying to get hold of that person, you're trying to speak to that person to know exactly what you've done and you cannot even get any, uh, you can't get anything back, you can't even get no feedback. So you're sitting there and you're speculating, you're trying to work it out why you are getting this silent treatment. But I want to tell someone today, if you're getting a silent treatment, consider it great joy. James just once said, consider great joy when you're faced with trials of many kinds. God is developing something in you that you'll be able to stand against the scheme of the enemy later on. So when somebody's giving you some treatment right now, just stand, just stand, especially if you know that you've done nothing wrong. Go to the Lord, examine your heart, say, Lord, is it me? Is there something in my heart or something I've said and done that's caused this person to be hurt? And as long as you've done your bit, in pursuing peace, because there's another scripture that says, pursue peace where possible. Some people do not want your peace. Some people, they're that hard done by, they're that jealous, they're that, they're, they're going into deep sulking, deep, deep rooted sulkiness and feeling rejected and all the, you know, all the emotions that they're feeling that they don't want the peace. But we know the word of God says that it's ungodly because that, that's not walking in holiness. But as long as you've done your bit, that you're going to try and make peace with that person, then you are free. I remember um, years ago that there was a lady that I kind of had a bit of a fallout with, you know, when you're first in Christ and you're learning your way and everything, you kind of sometimes respond in a way that you used to respond. And years later, the Lord said to me, go make peace with her. So I did, I messaged her um, through Facebook to make peace with her. And she still had bad feelings in her heart towards me. And it wasn't a big thing that happened, but she still had feelings in her heart towards me. But I felt free. I felt free that I had done what the Lord had told me to do, pursue peace, pursue holiness, because otherwise we will not see the Lord because we serve a holy God. God is holy, so be holy for I am holy. So we're just accountable for our own walk and our own um, actions and what we say to others. So we, we walk in the righteousness of God and do the right thing. But the silent treatment sometimes can take a while to get over because when someone's giving you a silent treatment and you're trying to work out what you've done wrong, it can cause anxiety, it can cause stress, it can cause all kinds of ill feelings. It can make some people physically sick. But I want to encourage you today that when it happens to you and you know in your hearts of hearts that you've done nothing wrong, stand on the word of God, do your bit to make peace and move on. Move on. I had also, going back a few years back, that somebody just walked out of my life. I'd ministered to them for 17 years and they stayed at my house that weekend and just walked out of my life. And it, I didn't shed a tear. You know, and the reason why I didn't shed a tear because people had said things to me before they warned me and I could feel something. You know, sometimes people, when they see you in, at your lowest point, they want to kick you down even more. So let them walk, let them walk those want to give you the silent treatment because they have not held value to you as a person. You are valuable. If they cannot hold value to you as a person and show you the respect that you deserve, then let them walk. On the other hand, if you have done something wrong and they're offended and they've, they've walked away, then still try and pursue peace. Still try and keep the unity of the spirit in a bond of peace, like I was sharing about the lady and then I messaged her on Facebook. I tried to keep that peace, you know, because God is the God of peace. He's the peace I give you. The peace of God will dwell within us, dwell with us when we focus on the good things of God. As it says in Philippians chapter four, verse eight, finally, brethren, whatever is pure, whatever is worthy, whatever is praise or whatever is noble, meditate on these things and the peace of God, the God of peace, sorry, will dwell with you. 
And when his peace comes in, when you begin to focus on your journey and the good things, the sardic treatment will no longer have an effect on you. It might initially have an effect on you, but when you focus on your journey and you focus on God and you focus on what is going right, suddenly you stop missing that person. Suddenly it becomes irrelevant and you can see everything more clearly because it could actually be that God is actually moving that person out of your way because he could see your future. He can see where you're going. He can see the obstacles. He can see the danger. He can see the blessings. He can see the joy. So sometimes when people walk away and they give you the silent treatment, so fine, that's okay, you give me the silent treatment. So when someone's giving you a silent treatment, know that the issue's with them. Because even if you have done wrong, they shouldn't be giving you the silent treatment. That's them taking authority over your emotions. You take your authority back. We take our authority back, take our authority over our own emotions. Because we can decide whether we're gonna sit and allow another person to damage our, our, our hearts, damage our mind, damage our well-being damage our journey, we can we can make that decision. There's nothing wrong in taking some time out to say, right, I'm gonna just be silent for a moment myself, according to Ecclesiastes chapter three, I'm gonna be silent myself. And during this time of solitude, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna come out a different person because in that time of solitude, God can make a new wine. In a crushing and oppressing, he's making new wine. You'll come out a new person, completely new person. There was a time when a lot of people scattered. They scattered from Jesus. They turned away from him for a word that he gave. He said, if you have, you have to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. But it's like, what, seriously? This is too hard for me. And they were gone. There was, and a lot of them went. It wasn't just one or two people. They were gone. And he turned to his disciples and said, are you going to leave me too? Even though I know one of you are going to deceive me. So you let them go. We're not here to beg anyone to stay with you. And this is what the person does. You know, in a relationship, especially friendships and relationships, they want you to beg them back. They want you to suffer. They want you to feel the pain that they are actually feeling because they're hurting to do to give the son its treatment in the first place. But it's coming back again to the word jealousy. Jealousy. You don't have to really have the whole world for someone to be jealous of you. You know, people can be jealous of your potential. They could be jealous of what your your call. People can be jealous for any reason i mean if we've all been honest at some point that we feel a bit of jealousy but we about certain things but we don't have to actually cut people off we face it we face it but in relationships it is a form of domestic abuse when someone gives you some treatment for long periods of time especially you know somebody can sulk for a moment let's be honest somebody can sulk for a moment you think okay they're a bit sulking for the day let me try and make amends and then you make up and everything's fine when you're going in the two days, you think, okay, three days, fine, you know, give them a bit of space. You know, some people have to digest things, you know, people with different stages of maturity, you can give them that space. But when it pro is prolonged for a long period of time, then you need to start assessing the situation. Is this really a, a friendship or relationship that you really want to pursue? You pursue the peace, but assess it. Is it good for your mental health? Is it good for your core? Is it good for your relationship with you and God? Because if they're doing it once, you think, okay, then I can let it go. They'll do it again and they'll do it again. And it will get worse. It will escalate. As we see the serpent in the book of Genesis turn into a dragon in the book of Revelation. However, on the other side of the coin of this, we have a God that we serve. And we have to go into prayer and intercession to know what is God actually saying in this before we actually say enough's enough. What is God saying to you? Is there a spiritual war going on? Is there something that you're missing? Is there something that needs to be prayed through? Does that person need deliverance? Do they need healing? Once you've done your bit and you seek the Lord, I believe it's okay to say goodbye. It's okay to just let them go. You've pursued peace. You've pursued holiness. You've gone to the Lord. You've pursued the, the unity of the spirit. You've done all those things. You've, you've used the, 
word of God, you've used a sword of the spirit to try and win your brother over or sister over, your loved one over. You've done all those things. Once you've done those things, then you can let them go. You can let them go. Let God, release them to God and let God deal with their hearts. Let God deal with them. Keep them in your prayers. Keep their mental well-being in prayer because for someone to do that, there's something wrong. Now, we're going to look at cut off someone who's evil because that's scriptural. Psalm 101, King David said, oh, cut off all evil doers from the city of the Lord. Now, on that level, that's a bit different because now we're talking about a battle, a spiritual battle. We cannot hold hands with the enemy. We cannot wash things over and let the kingdom of God be contaminated. So we have to use wisdom there, who we're supposed to cut off ourselves and who we're supposed to keep. We have to be careful who we let into our personal space because your personal space is very important because once somebody's into your personal space and you find that they're wrong, it's hard to get them out. And not only that, you would end up being spiritually damaged for a while, which means that you'll have to go through the healing process, sometimes even deliverance, process and even in all of that it can take a while to get yourself back on your feet when that happened to me in a big way since I've been in ministry it took a good two to three years to actually fully recover even though I was still moving forward to recover in myself to be the person I am now it took three years because the damage has already been done to your spirit, your spirit's wounded, and you don't even know that your spirit is so wounded until you actually say, no more. Until you actually say, actually, this is actually killing me. Because the flesh can die. The flesh is dying every day, whether we're in Christ or not. The flesh, the physical flesh is dying every day. But when the spirit is dying, sometimes we don't know because it's subtle. The devil waits like a roaring lion to steal, kill and destroy. It's subtle. And we talk about a lot of domestic abuse, domestic violence, but the silent treatment being a form of domestic abuse is a killer. Because for me personally, I, like some of um, you are watching today and maybe um, watching the future, some of you already know my story that I came from domestic violence. And at times I really just wished that he would just hit me because the silent treatment and the name calling was actually worse. And I can remember my second final ex-partner would just be silent. He'd go absent without leave, silent. And that in itself is abuse. He'd go silent, so I'll be back soon. You're looking at the clock, you're looking at the clock, you're looking at the clock, he hasn't come back hasn't come back overnight, hasn't come back the next day or the next day. The silent treatment comes in. Oh, where have you been? The silent treatment. Don't want to be asked any questions because of their own guilt. So the next thing, no, the violence takes place. But the, um, the silent treatment, treatment, the ghosting, jealousy, it's a narcissist um, characteristic being um, the silent treatment is. I want my own way and I'm going to get it. I'm going to hurt you by giving you the silent treatment. And we encourage everyone to put your comments in if um, on any comments you may have or any questions so that I can answer them. But the silent treatment, no one deserves the silent treatment. The only time we should give the silent treatment, cut anybody off if they're being that evil and we try to, um, show them the errors of their way and it's doing a lot of damage. According to Psalm 101, we'll cut off all evildoers from the city of the Lord. Be encouraged today that you matter, you're worth it. God is in control of your life. Submit it to him. Don't let anyone make you feel that you're in the wrong because they're giving you the silent treatment. Amen? Somebody giving you the silent treatment and walking away doesn't mean that you have done anything wrong. I see so many people crying that their partner's not talking to them because they said something they didn't like or um, they didn't do something they wanted them to do because they couldn't get round to it. The silent treatment is a killer. It kills your spirit. It hurts your heart. 
it wounds you, it wounds you, makes you frustrated, makes you feel like it's you. It, you must, you're a bad person, but you're not. The issue is with the person who's giving you the silent treatment. I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Praise the Lord. We're going to have more talks on love, the silent treatment, domestic abuse. Domestic abuse comes in so many different forms. And I'll emphasize again, the silent treatment is a silent killer. It's a silent killer. It's subtle because you think, oh, okay, it's only for a moment and then it grows and grows. Next time it could be even more, it can be worse. But if somebody starts lessening their silent treatment towards you, then you know that things are changing. Things are, they begin to grow a bit more. They begin to mature. But if they keep extending this silent treatment, just know that it's going to get worse and your wounds are going to get bigger. Your wounds are going to get bigger. Praise the Lord. Jamaica said it really does wound you. Thank you, Jamaica. It really does wound you. It's a killer. So my prayer today for you today is know that you matter. You've done nothing wrong. May the Lord set you free today from the silent treatment and may you take up your mat and walk in the name of Jesus. This is Fiona Lynch from Dance Tonight, Overcomers Network channel. God bless you all.